you would think, I think this is an old, old uh, adage that the couple that diets together loses weight together, you would think. However, a new study done at the University of Connecticut found virtually no correlation or no marked difference whether you were dieting alone or whether your partner was also dieting with you. It didn't improve things whatsoever. Is that surprising? It's a little surprising. I'm not sure that I totally buy the study. You don't buy it. Mm, I don't buy it. <laughs> why? Why is that? Because if you're living with someone and they're eating junk all the time and influencing you to eat junk all the time, yeah. how in the world would that not impact your weight loss? Well, here's what they found. It's that no matter whether you have somebody dieting with you or not, that doesn't influence your self-control. In other words, whether you're dieting alone or whether somebody you know that you live with is dieting, they can be on the diet. They can have a lot of self-control. But if you don't have a lot of self-control, them dieting isn't going to help you at all. But if I sat here today yeah. and I brought in Wendy's breakfast every morning and I had enough for you and me, don't you think that that would probably influence your breakfast choices? I don't know. You think... <laughs> but if I didn't have Wendy's breakfast at all yeah. in here every day and it wasn't even an option, I feel as if you probably would be less likely to eat Wendy's breakfast. I agree with that. However, I don't think most couples are that. <laughs> you don't think that they eat dinner Like together if my every wife night? starts dieting, I'm not going to start bringing Wendy's breakfast around. What do you, but <laughs> that's, you not what, I, that's not the question at hand. The question at hand is, does your partner influence your dieting? I think your partner has a big influence on your diet because you may not even be the one who goes to Kroger and shops for groceries yeah. every time. So when she brings back whatever she wants, or he brings back whatever he wants, I feel like that would have an impact on what your snacks are at the household. Yeah, it's, it's hard to square this out, but I mean, the science is the science, right? No, nah, I don't believe the science. I'll tell you that I have limited anecdotal experience with this. And I found that me and my wife have been able to diet solo and not completely derail the other person. What's tough is, here's what's tough. I, this is the, the flip side. Is when you're not the one dieting and the other person is the one dieting. That's what's tough. Don't you agree? Makes you want to diet. <laughs> no, it makes you, you don't want to diet. <laughs> See, it makes me want to diet. No. Because my roommate eats healthy all the time. The reason that I look like I do is because my roommate's way stricter than I am. Really? If I lived by myself, I would not go to the gym every day. Uh huh. I would not eat the food that I do because he is such a good influence on me. Yeah. He no, eats that's like healthier than anyone I know. That's what I'm saying. So it makes me want to go to the gym. In many cases, the dieter is actually, I guess you could say, pulling up the diet -y. Oh, yeah. Uh, the non-dieter, as opposed to how we're imagining it, where your hypothesis this whole time is, if you're not dieting, you'd be a negative influence. You'd be pulling down the person that is, but apparently that's it's completely reversed. Well, it just depends on if you're just getting into it or if you're already sustained in it. Yeah. Like, if you're, like, an all-time workouter, if you go to the gym every day, no one's messing with that. But if you guys are both just trying to get into dieting and this isn't your starting thing from at all, one, yeah. yeah, if you're starting from square one and you haven't done it at all, then it's really easy to get pulled down because you can just go back to the lifestyle that you were living a week ago. But if you're like totally engroved into it, no one's changing that. Yeah. You're just going to help pull the other person up, I think. Um, I think what it really is just saying is your self control, and this is kind of sad, is your self control is your self control. <laughs> and there's not a lot you can do to overcome that. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Isaiah, you and I, it's no secret. We're not millionaires. We're not rich. And I tend to think that, by and large, the people listening right now are our friends. Most of them probably wouldn't be considered rich to most either. 
in the United States, although maybe they're rich compared to us. But here's my question, and we can open up the riot hotline, of course. Even though you're not rich, what are some things you do that make you feel like you are rich? You know, when you just feel like you're living in luxury. Text in at 8772-RADIO-U. The first one that comes to mind for me, to see if this jump starts other people's thought process, is uh, almost any sit-down restaurant. If I go into a restaurant, sit down, and order and eat there, it feels like a luxurious experience. Oh, you're hot-dogging, are you? Yeah. You sit down... At old Applebee's. Yeah, I don't know about Applebee's. Look at me now. It matters a little bit about the ambiance. Because if I go to Buffalo Wild Wings, which I, I rarely sit in there, which is kind of ironic, actually. Uh, but normally I get that to go. But no, if I sit in a restaurant that doesn't have a million TVs, if I go, here's a, this is a low bar. BJ's Brew House. Mm, you could just have a bazooki. Yeah. That's a rich experience. Wow. For Look me. at me now. Yeah, I've would, made it. Would the people in high school believe where I'm at now? <laughs> Sitting down with my wife at a BJ's, uh-huh. getting myself a bazooki. Were, man, were you guys wrong about yep, me? Living it up. So hopefully that, that gets some juices flowing. And I guess it tells you a lot about, about me and how I am with money. I think there's many different ways to attack this. Uh huh. Like some people might even say, just having the thicker toilet paper. Some people might say that. For me, maybe this is, maybe I am rich because I refuse any toilet paper that isn't the thick toilet paper. Money bags, yeah. money bags, <laughs> Hudson. Goodness gracious. Well, there's just, just there's some things that uh, no matter what what your means are. You just, ha- you can't, you can't settle for less. And for me, one of them is toilet paper. I'm sure a lot of people have different opinions. Yeah. I'm always shocked when I go to uh, people's houses that are more well-to-do than I, which there's a lot of people like that. Well, you never know. And they have lesser toilet paper. It shocks me. Well, sometimes you think somebody's hot dogging. Yeah. And, and they're not a hot dogging. Or maybe that's the key to their success is cutting back, is, is buying the one-ply. Well, I'm sure we're getting some texts in now, so we'll come back and see what you guys think. Yeah, what do you think? Things that make you feel like you're rich, even though you aren't. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio you. Having a membership at a specialty gym where she goes rock climbing. That's a good one. That is good. I'm sure that's expensive. It sounds rich. Sounds fancy. Uh, Mike says, these are good. Going to a local cafe for a $10 coffee. Paying up for a coffee feels fancy, feels rich. And then he also says this is even better. Buying premium meat from the butcher. Going to the butcher? That's either... Some premium meat. That's yeah. e- you're either rich or... You're from the Brady Bunch. <laughs> There's only two options. Or you really, really care about your meats. Yeah, that's right. Uh, we were talking about, uh, for some people, it's like two-ply toilet paper. Charmin. Uh, Daryl says one-ply toilet paper is for the guests. <laughs> Attaboy. Remind me not to come to uh, your place, Daryl. Um, Carly said getting her nails done. That's expensive. Yeah. I guess I wouldn't know too much about that, but I believe you. And what else do we have here? Um, oh, I like this. Billy says, having a metal credit card. People love the metal credit card. Yeah, I used to have a metal credit card. That does feel fancy. That feels like you're a rich Kinda person. Like you right just there. drop it on the table so everybody hears. Yeah. I was always like tapping it. Tapping it on the counter and stuff like that. The worst kind of person. Yeah. <laughs> Flipping it around. Congratulations on all your success. Oh, no. I dropped my heavy metal credit card. 
Let me just pick that up. What's yours, Isaiah? I know you, you're, a, you're a pretty frugal guy. I would say it doesn't take a lot to make me feel special. Yeah. Getting queso at Chipotle. I'm kind of hot dogging. <laughs> I get guac on the side, hot dogging. I would say maybe not having to check my bank account when yes. I buy something. How about that? Yes. That's just, that's just facts right there. Jeffrey <laughs> says eating sushi, even if it's just a cheap pack from the supermarket, makes me feel special. Nice. Uh, I also see Jeffrey Xbox Series X having the new Xbox, but he says he only plays free games. <laughs> <laughs> Likewise, I just found uh, maybe you might want to try this too, Jeffrey, a game called Party Animals. Real fun. Kind of like Super Smash Bros. It's free if you have Game Pass. Um, what about some people are saying sleeping in? Mm. Is that a rich activity? I don't think so at all. I always think sleeping in, that's like, that's lazy. Like, I, feel, I imagine the rich are go-getters. I know they all aren't, but I imagine they are. I imagine they're getting up before, before I am, before the crack is on, so they can get their exercise in and then start making calls, business deals. That's how I picture it. How about this one? What about just auto pay in general? Having things on auto pay? Oh, like bills come up and you don't even realize? You don't even know. Well... That would make me feel rich if I could do that. <laughs> Having it on auto pay and then just at the end of the month, just like take my money. Here you go. That's, that's beautiful. Jim, listen to this. Jim paid off his mortgage. Now that's, that's, you now are rich. What he paid, what he's, what he's spending money yeah. on now. Having all that extra money every month. That must be that you, you, you have become rich, Jim. You, and you could sell your house at any time and think about all the money you'd get. What about when, Straight you, to you. when you just transfer money from your checking to savings account? It could be $10. <laughs> could be 100 But darn, it feels good. Putting money in your savings account. Mm -hmm. See, the, the difficult tension between so many of these is, because uh, uh, I also thought going on vacation makes me feel rich. Uh, and like I said, going to a restaurant. But, but you feel rich while you're doing it until you get the bill. And then I don't feel rich anymore. Then I'm reminded that, oh, yeah, this costs money. You want to know where rich people hang out? I walked into a rich people place yesterday, not because I was shopping there, but because I was returning something on Amazon, Whole Foods. Oh, my oh, goodness. The rich people love I, Whole Foods. I walked around there for the first time ever because uh -huh. I returned something from Amazon there. I was like, yeah, I'll just check out the store. They got I some watched, good stuff. Oh, my gosh. Not worth it whatsoever. It was insane. <laughs> I walked through that store, and I was offended. The people shop here. Yeah. I was looking around. I thought people would know just by looking at me, by the looks of my face, that I did not belong there. It was wild. <laughs> when I saw other people my age walking through that store, I was in shock. I was like, is this the only place you spend money? Yeah. Is this what you do for Actually, fun? Actually, on that note, is this you ever, your spot? you ever go to the, the mall and go to like the department store, but not like Macy's, like one of the, the better ones, like Von Mar. And everything, like the minimum thing is $69.99. That feels fancy just walking around in there. <laughs> Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. We live in a world where more and more businesses, corporations, trying to incorporate more robots and AI into work, into the workplace. But. This is interesting. A recent study has found that when people are forced to work alongside robots, it makes the people lazier. If you or I, Isaiah, had a robot co-host, it would make us somehow even lazier than we already are. The reason they say is because people, when they're in a group setting, a group dynamic, and they know that a robot can pick up the slack for whatever they miss, for whatever they skip out on. They don't feel bad about it. And so they go ahead and just let the robot take, all, take the brunt of, of the workload. Robots are making us lazier. I guess that makes a lot of sense when you think about it. Isn't that just what people would say about technology in general? Um, well... I guess the flip side would be 
technology could also make you more efficient. So it might make you lazier, but at least it makes you, uh, uh, allows you to accomplish more. But I think in this instance, it's the idea that if a robot can perform the same level of work that a human could, but if it was a human, you'd feel bad about foisting so much of the work on them. With a robot, you don't feel that because it's not a person. So you don't care because it doesn't have feelings. So therefore mm -hmm. making us more efficient. But I think it's taking, the, I think the thought is if a robot can be incorporated in and everybody kept working at the same level, you'd get, you would be more efficient. But instead, we're actually slowing down and the robot's taking over more. And so we're getting less done in the same amount of time. But at the same time, you could say it's taking the mental load off of everyone too. Yeah. Improving their mental health on a day-to-day -day basis at work. Maybe making work a little bit better. Yeah. You know, you that don't way. have to do so much. Exactly. I mean, they're definitely happier at work. Is that important? They have to could be. be. If you don't have to do as much. And maybe the, um, the laziness that you would, the increased laziness you'd experience from working with the robot be canceled out by the decreased distractions because you wouldn't be like chatting up the robot. Oh, no. It's not like you're going to have uh, you know, small talking with the robot instead of getting work done. I think that this could even, if it was me, it would increase my workload. You think so? Yeah, because I would hate the robots. I know for a fact I wouldn't like the robots. Oh, so you'd be competitive. I would be like, that thing can't, cannot work me. Yeah. Can't take my job. Because if, if you show that you're just going to let the, the robot outdo you, yeah. they're just going to replace you with a robot. All of a sudden, yeah, you become way more, way more replaceable, way less useful, yeah, way less so you valuable. Gotta, so I, what I would do the whole time is I would just degrade the robot, probably. Yeah. Anything show it, my superiority. Anything it can do, you can do better. I can do it better. This thing barely even works. You'd I be, can't believe it's even here. It's useless. Be, you'd probably be bullying it. I would be. I would be, be degrading like the robot. Pushing it over. I'd be talking to my bosses. Yeah. Saying this thing's useless. I can't uh -huh. believe they sent it down here. It keeps I keep knocking it over, it never gets back up. It's in my way. Yeah. I'm trying to get work done. I can't get this thing out of here. <laughs> it has no idea what it's doing. It breaks down every half an hour. Me, on the other hand, the ideal worker. So it sounds like for Radio U, we should get a robot in here. Yeah, bring it in. Because it would motivate you. Bring it in. Maybe you need it. Oh, I would, let me tell you this. If you think that I'm hostile towards Hudson, if there was a robot sitting in here trying to talk to me, oh my gosh, it'd be over. I'd be so upset with it every day. Disinformation. Mispronunciations. Bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. Talking about how uh, a new study says that uh, if you put a robot in the workplace, it makes everybody else lazier because they just throw off all of their work onto the robot. Everybody except Isaiah, who says he would simply work harder than the robot. You know, you do the same thing. You'd outwork. You'd be motivated to show up the robot to outdo it. And so that'd actually make you work harder. Um, I don't know how many people have that kind of work ethic that you do, but I guess nobody wants to be, nobody wants to feel worse than a robot. You can't get outdid by a robot. No, you don't want that. You want a robot to take your job? You're going to go home that day feeling real sorry. Yeah, that's right. You took our job. Um, I'm thinking, for me, I think I'm a testament because there's some people that would say that the key to like advancing in the workplace is just putting your head down and, and working as hard as you possibly can. You know the people who say that? The people that don't, aren't naturally gifted. <laughs> because <laughs> I'm a testament to that if you're supremely talented, you can get pretty far without working very hard at all. Uh, I don't know. I don't know. I think there's, there's a big debate because what's the oldest story in the book, right? It's uh, the tortoise and the hare, where the hare is the one that's naturally, has a lot of natural ability versus the tortoise who just works hard. He just puts his head down, and then who wins? Hard work pays off. Slow yeah. and steady wins the race, they we've, say. We've all heard that story, but I think, and I'm serious about this, I don't think that's true because you can only get so far. Like, if you're going up against a robot, you can work as hard as you want, but if the robot has more ability than you, it's going to beat you eventually. Over time. It's like me and you on here. Yeah. I have all the natural ability. You work really hard and I'm the star. <laughs> Something like that. That's what I was thinking. You can only you can only make up so much with work ethic. Eventually, the work ethic, the putting your head down, it falls short. And I'll tell you in the business world too, a lot of times it goes completely unnoticed. 
a lot of times you can work really hard and uh, that's just what you're expected to do. And so it doesn't really get you very far. And I think there's in uh, like when it comes to religion, there's a lot of religions out there that would tell like basically the, the message of the religion is put your head down, work really hard on following the rules, being the best person you can be. And that's, that's how you succeed at the religion. That's how you get closer to God or accomplish whatever you're supposed to accomplish. But uh, again, it can only get you so far. You can only be so good of a person by trying really hard. What God tells you, what Jesus tells you in, in life is he's done the work for you. You don't have to work really hard to be a super great person. And that's how you get ahead. Jesus is saying, I did the work to save you. I did the work to uh, make sure that you don't have to deal with the consequences of of where you fail, of where you wind up being lazy, or where you aren't naturally talented. Jesus put in the work for you, to save you, to give you a new life. And he wants to give that to you. And all you need to do is ask for it. Say, hey, God, I'm ready to find out what that is all about. A new life where it's not all about rules. It's not all about hard work that uh, just wears you out. I want to find out more about what like, that's like straight from you. Start talking to God. You want to know more? Check out RadioU.com slash free gift. Add a little riot to your Instagram feed. Follow at Radio U Official. The Riot. Radio U. It is Choice Champions in the Riot. Here's how it works. We do this every Thursday. Isaiah and I, we do a fantasy draft based off of one topic. We each get three picks, snake draft style. You decide which of our teams is more appropriate for the topic. Which team is better? In today's case, which team is more universally annoying? Because the topic is pet peeves. Little things that annoy you and bother you. You uh, listen to our draft and then text in at 8772-RADIO-U who who you think won. And let us know your pet peeve as well. Isaiah, you have the honor of the first pick. I'm struggling with this topic a little bit because I'm not sure what is constituted as a pet peeve versus Mm -hmm. what is not. But I have some answers here. Okay. Things that really grind my gears. Yeah. I have the first pick. At number one, I'm just going to go with timid drivers. Timid drivers. Too nervous to turn left, you would say? Too nervous to go out in the middle of the intersection when you have to turn left. Too nervous to pull out when you need to turn. Any sort of slow driver. Really just any bad driving. When you're being a little bit too shy. Yeah. Timid drivers drive me absolutely crazy. I get it. Uh, I was my first thought to try to tear your pick down was that maybe they're they're safer. But in many cases, being a timid driver can actually cause accidents. So get on out there, boy. Yeah. If we're turning left and we're the light, get your butt on out there. Yep. That's right. We're not turning left from way back here. That's dangerous. Get out there in the middle of the intersection. We're never going to make it. I get the next two picks. First, I'm going with loud eaters, people that chew with their mouth open, or this is related but not exactly the same, but the people that smack their lips a lot, especially before they say something. If I was like, you know which one I'm picking? <laughs> I, I hate when people do that. I hate when people do that. That's a good one. Um, I also, so I get the next pick also. And this one, I hope it's universal. People that don't close like bread bags, that don't use the twist tie, or don't roll up a bag of chips like properly, do something to save it. That's wasteful, and it's not that hard to figure out, right? You just fold the bag over of the, of the bread, that's not good enough to me. Then the next time I pick up the bread, oh no, I didn't know it wasn't closed, and the bread's falling on the floor. There's a lot of ways it can go wrong. It bothers me. Now I get back to back. I will go with when people will not discipline their terrible child. <laughs> I hate. I work at my mom's toy store sometimes. Yeah. And there will be terrible children that come in there. And parents just let them run wild. Yeah. Oh, that's just our little jokester. He's not being funny. He's being bad. Yeah. Get him out of here. I, I, I like that one. I Although, hate that one. I'll say that 
just a child misbehaving in public, uh, it just makes me uncomfortable either way because either there's only two ways it can go. Either the parent doesn't discipline them and they just keep doing crazy stuff or any parent like disciplining a child also makes me uncomfortable. <laughs> just seeing them like, now I told you, you, gotta, you can't act like this. That also is very uncomfortable. But I'd rather them do that than yeah, have, no, that's, have little Tommy that's better upsetting than him me. Pulling out all the Play-Doh and grinding it into the carpet. And then my final one, when people tell me to do something I was already planning on doing. Oh. And so then it makes you look bad as if you weren't going to do it. Like when, like if I'm at my grandmother's house uh -huh. and my mom's like, Isaiah, why don't you sit up and let your grandmother sit down? Like, mom, if you were to give me three more seconds, yeah. oh. now it looks like I'm doing it because you told me to do it. Uh -huh. I'm like a bad person. Oh. But if you would give me a second, I would have opened the door Hard to argue for Betty that. Lou. All that right. Sh should have been higher on your list. It should have been the first overall pick. Um, my last one, self-explanatory. People that don't put away shopping carts. Come on. Uh, all right. Now's the time. Isaiah, recap your team. Timid drivers. Not disciplining your terrible child. People telling you to do something that you were already going to do. And my list is loud eaters. People who don't uh, put away the bread properly, who don't close up the bag, and people who don't put away shopping carts. Which team is better, more annoying, and what's your pet peeve that we missed? 8772 Radio U. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Pet peeves. Little things people do. That really bothered you. Isaiah had the first pick. Your team is? Timid drivers. People that will not discipline their terrible child. And then when people tell you to do something, you were already planning on doing. My team is loud eaters and lip smacking. People who don't close bread bags properly. And shopping cart uh, leavers. People who leave shopping carts behind. The votes are rolling in. Suzanne, uh, no, Nick says his biggest pet peeve is when people say nuclear instead of nuclear. That's a lot of people to do that. Including, and this always drove me crazy, you know, the show 24? Mm-hmm. They said nuclear. <laughs> and nuclear. I can't even say. Nuclear? Nu nuclear. They said Jack Bauer would say that all the time. Um... Sarah, 100% on Isaiah's side because uh, she also worked in a toy store, so the rotten kids, she's with you. They wear on you. Yeah. Todd also, both have good lists, but I've got to go with Isaiah. Sam, I would lean more towards timid drivers than the chips and bread not being put away. He says it's a push, but uh, it sounds like he's maybe giving you the edge a little bit. Carrie says Hudson has a good list, but Isaiah's last two are the winners for me. Over the last two. Bad children, parents not disciplining them, and people telling you to do something you were already planning on doing, making you look like you weren't going to do it in the first place. Jonathan says 100% with Isaiah with the drivers. Um, Regina, looks like she's voting for you. Can't believe how kids act these days. Also. Doesn't like when people are driving below the speed limit. In oh, the fast we hate lane. that. Yeah, we hate that. We do. Huh? Um, Stephanie says hers is people who leave way too much space when they're stopped at like a stoplight or whatever. Yeah. Wow. I never even, I don't know if I've thought about that. Yeah, when they're like slowing down way too early. Can I get on up there? Here's one that bothers me, and this really doesn't even affect anything. But when, on the driver thing, the people that start inching forward before the light turns green like they're saving any time you know who's doing that yeah it's probably, me yeah i've seen you do it i'm hot dogging brie says my whole day's attitude can be changed and ruined over a loud eater and the shopping cart putting away thing is annoying too so she's going with me and oh man the people are just fi people are fired up Isaiah's list by far going, uh, according to Justin. Um, there's no reason to twist the bread back shut. 
You're just going to use it again maybe the same day. How much bread are you eating, Justin? How many meals? You have to twist it shut. What are you talking about? Ridiculous. Uh -huh. Erica says, even more annoying is when people put the small carts in the large cart section and vice versa. <laughs> like, why did you even bother? That's funny. Which, uh, which ones were you close on? Because I have some that are more, I tried to pick some that were more universal. I have some that are very specific that I still want to get off my chest. Um, when people talk about something very niche and expect you to know what they're talking about, and then they explain it to you. I hate that. Mm. Like, if I know that you don't know what the heck I'm talking about, I won't act like you were ever going to know. I would yeah. explain it to you to start. Right. I wouldn't be like, oh, well, I mean, you're obviously going to put the flex capacitor in this. <laughs> yeah. and, oh, you don't, you don't know about the flex capacitor? Let me, well, what it is. And then you feel like they're talking down to you. Yeah. I hate that. Yeah, that's no good. And then when you're telling a story or when you're talking about something and somebody replies with saying, not even that, but this, and then they just repeat <laughs> what you said, I hate that. Not even that, but this. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, got it. Okay. Whatever you say. Mine are way more niche. I don't like, this is a new one, but I know I brought this up before. On TV shows and movies, when somebody's drinking something, and they add the sound effect of them going. Ew. Nobody does that in real life. And we can all see that they're drinking. You don't need to do that. Also, this is a new one for me. When people say writ large, people use that to say like. Writ large? Yeah. I don't even know what that is. People would say, well, Radio U Band's writ large play metal music. But that's not what writ large means. What does writ large mean? Writ large means obvious, not by and large, not the majority. But that's how people use it. Also, sirens and music when you're driving, sirens and music and on, TV, uh, in, uh, on the radio. We would never do that at Radio U, making you think you need to pull over. The sound of flip-flops and... People who walk on the street when the sidewalk is perfectly fine. Get out of the way. I should have said bikers. <laughs> Darn it. <laughs> People hate People bikers. People who bike in the morning. Well, look, I've added up the votes, and although, Isaiah, you did win the majority of the votes, we did this by Electoral College, and I won Wisconsin. So, therefore, I am the winner once again. The only thing Isaiah loves more than the riot is himself. Someone who probably still lives with his mother and hates himself. You're listening to The Riot on Radio U. Here's a question for you. This shocked me. Do you have a will? I don't have anything to give away. <laughs> the only things I have to give away are negative, I think. Yeah. I have no, a bad dog. No, nobody wants to be included <laughs> in your will. A bad dog that someone will have to take. Uh-huh. I think that's still about all I have. Student loan debt. I have some student loan debt. Yep. Somebody, I don't even know how that works. I feel bad if somebody has to take that. Yeah. And then that's pretty much it. That's, that's what you're leaving behind. I've got some nice clothes. When you leave this earth. My younger brother's probably the only one that can fit into those. <laughs> so he can have those, I guess. <laughs> it surprised me. I just found out that about half of Americans have a will. Uh, you don't. I don't. I know somebody who does here at Radio U. Nay, nay. He has a will. He has a will, and Radio U is in it. Isn't that shocking? And what is he giving away? I don't know. What is he giving Radio U? Am I in it? Am I a part of it? Not specifically, but I guess by proxy or whatever, you know. By... Very, very nice of Nay, nay. Good so... work. He's ahead of the curve. <laughs> I guess. If, Radio, if Nene ever dies under mysterious circumstances. We're prime suspects. Yeah, that's right. I just couldn't believe, though, that 50% of, or almost 50% of people have a will. That's something, to me, at my age, I don't think I'll even, like, I don't know why I would need it for, for hopefully years and years to come. So it's not really crossed my mind, you know? Well, think about this, right? I assume this is over the age of 18, because if you're under 18, you can't even yeah, have a will, right? Right, I don't think so. So let's do, I mean, 18 to 80 years old. I'm looking at just the population breakdown, right? Yeah. So from 45 up for the U.S. of A, 45 up, that's like 41% of the population. Mm. 
if you take out even with the 18 under 18 year olds in there. Yeah. So 41% of the population is over 45. So that means everybody over 45 would have to have a will and then a bunch of people under 45. Yeah. So anybody between like 30 and 44, there's some outliers in there that probably have some kids that have their will set up. Yeah. That's pretty shocking. I'm sure there's a lot of people that listen that have a will. There has to be, right? Somebody does. And then what happens if you don't have a will and you pass away? You know, I've what, always wondered what that happens, too. really? Like, if my parents don't have a will, they pass away, what, what happens? Who gets the toy stores? Hopefully not me. <laughs> I guess it, that must happen fairly often. I don't know. I, 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 it's a mystery. Imagine how mad you'd be at your parents. You guys never made a will? Yeah. You're 75. <laughs> Would you be mad, though? Yes. I feel, but what age do you, what age is the appropriate age where you're like, I need one now? When do you start thinking about it? I don't know. The first time you have a big health scare? Probably should be before too late. that. Yeah, too late. Too late. Should it be I don't know. what age? Maybe when you have a child? But you know, you know what I always maybe hear? when you have a kid? Maybe. I always hear people, though, like, especially, I guess especially in movies and stuff, but people arguing over the will. Mm-hmm, that's what happens. Not, it's like it doesn't even save any trouble. You know, but, but that's what, why you have the will. Yeah. If there's no will, then then that's just a huge. Then everybody argument. just argues. Then that's even more. Because then there's nothing it, written down. If it's the if you have a will, at least it's only a couple people that can argue. If you have a will, then at least yeah, it's already broken down what they actually want. But if they don't have a will, then you're like, well, mom would have wanted <laughs> wanted me to have the house. Yeah. Not you. When was the last time you even called mom? But if I die and I have kids and they're gonna fight either way, then what's the point? You know what I mean? Yeah, but at least you can lay know. it out. There's Someone's gonna end up. Reason. I mean, gotta... I'm not gonna argue. What should people have wills? Or yeah, not? right. I just, I just don't understand it. It's something. So I, you don't that... think that they should people should have wills? No, I'm not saying that. I just, <laughs> I just don't. It's just a world that I, a pool that I have not even dipped my toe into at all. So I have no familiarity with it. Once I get something of value, I'll consider a will. Yeah. But until then, I'll just hot dog it. Yeah, that means you, I, it, until then, your truck is up for grabs. It is. We're not sure who behaves worse. The riot or their dogs. I don't even know how to behave like a real human being. The riot. Radio you. We're squarely in spooky season. Halloween is here. We've both been watching a few Halloween movies as of late. I just watched Hocus Pocus again. It's a fun one. I just watched the fourth Halloween time movie. <laughs> the fourth one. I watched the second one and the uh-huh. fourth one. That's definitely on the Mount Rushmore of Halloween Town movies. It's up there. Return to Halloween Town is the one that I watched where Marnie changes characters. <laughs> Wait, it's a different actress. It's a different actress, yeah. <laughs> and they thought you wouldn't notice. I know, and I caught on. Yeah. You know what? Can't fool me. As some people, some people that are definitely not us watch like actual horror movies for Halloween. You ever watch any like slasher movies like the original Halloween? I've seen them, but I've seen scary movies before. Yes. Have I watched any this season? Not any true scary, scary ones. I watched mm-hmm. one called sightless. That was, that was kind of spooky. Yeah. It was more of a thriller than it was a scary movie. Let me ask you this. If you were in a horror movie, what would be your fatal flaw? What would it be in a slasher movie that would get you killed? Hmm, that's a good question. It's hard to tell how you would be in that kind of situation when you know there's a murderer yeah. in your own home. I get spooked easily. Uh-huh. People know around Radio U I'm an easy scare, especially jump scare. Sometimes uh-huh. I, get, I get scared just at a knock at my door. Yeah. Oh, Michael the Sledgehammer does that to me all the time. He does it to me too. Yeah. I'm, I'm even a little bit too loud. Mm. They would find me. Yeah. That way. That sounds like you. I'm allowed. I'm also, you know what it is? I have it. I'm a loud whisper. <laughs> I've been told many a times whenever I try to whisper, I'm yeah. a loud whisper. So that probably would be my fatal flaw. Yeah. And by definition, then. If you're a loud whisperer, not only are you getting yourself killed, you're getting somebody else killed too. Yep. Because you have to be whispering to somebody and you're giving away both of your positions. 
For me, I think it would be one. I'm very unaware of my surroundings. Even if I hear a noise, like the killer's creeping up somewhere, I'm not going to know where it is because I'm just so oblivious. I don't have quick reflexes. And then secondly, here's the other thing that would get me, is that I think I would give up very easily. Like as soon as the killer starts chasing me, it's not that I don't have endurance. I'm just like, look, am I going to let the killer like kind of maim me and like injure me in this process? Like, so you see some horror movies and people are getting like all their rims, limbs ripped off and so like, like, and they're all still crawling things. away. Yeah, and they're still yeah. like, I still got to survive. I don't, that would not be me. As soon as one little, little something, I get a nick on my skin. I'm you done. got me. Yep. It's over. Uh huh. It is over. I'm waving the white flag. The killer gets me. Uh, okay. Who do you think would be the first to go in a Radio U horror movie? Mm, that's a good question. I would say, you know who it is? My, do you want me to say? Uh, or do we want to save it? Uh, I don't know. I, you know what? I want to see what other people have to think, to, uh, have to say too. Because I have an answer that I think is the answer. Okay. And I have good backing. 8772 Radio U. Who would be the first of the Radio U staff to, to get got? And what's your fatal flaw? Yeah, in a horror movie. Disinformation. Mispronunciations. Bad impressions. That's Hudson. This is The Riot on Radio U. All of the Radio U staff and a killer maybe was running rampant here at the studios. Who would be the first one to die? Isaiah, you said you had a, a definite answer. Mm-hmm. But before we get to that, Thomas said... Nene would buy a bunch of survival tools and then return them after she survived. <laughs> That's just a new thing. That's his thing. I like it. Good recall. That's good. That's good. Who do you think would, would be the first to go? See, I've got kind of, I've got an order of the first two people to, to go, actually. Okay. The first person to go, unfortunately, would be our engineer, Moneybag Chris. You think he'd be the first to go? The reason, now listen, this is why, this is why, because Chris has not come across to me as a skeptic, and I don't know that he would believe, because in the beginning of the horror movies, it's never 100% certain that there's a witch yeah, somebody, or a warlock. Right, so there's some spooky things going on. So you know that like I'm like a big baby, and I would believe that there's a werewolf or something. Yeah. Hidden, I'm hidden. Chris, the engineer, logical thinker. I don't think he would even believe. Mm. I think that his, I think his biggest, I think it would be that he, he doesn't believe. And one of his big strengths in life yep, would, would be, his, be his, weakness. his weakness in death. Because he would say, there's a logical explanation for this. Yeah. As an engineer would say. Right. And that's always the first one Come to on, go. guys. It wasn't a werewolf that broke the window. And let me tell you and this. And on the security cameras. That's just an illusion. And then you know what the worst part is, is afterwards... After he went, we would all be like, well, now we're done for. Yeah. He would have been the most capable one. That's right. That's why I was thinking. He's the one we could have used. When I was thinking this, I was thinking Chris would be the one to survive because he's so resourceful. Mm. The, the, the most resourceful one never ends up being the one who, who makes know. it on. I think after one person dies, he would. As long as he right, makes it past the first. He would have to be the first to die or be a bad movie. Yeah, because, because he would. Because if, he yeah. if he didn't die first, he'd get us all up in the radio, you attic, and home alone it up there. Exactly. And we'd be fine. That's exactly why. But and then the second person I have, because this was almost my first until I realized they would be the logical thinker. Then it's followed by either Nikki or Sydney would be next. Mm -hmm. Sydney would go before Nikki. You think? I think it's the opposite. Why do you say that? Because I assume that they would look for like one of our flaws, uh -huh. and I think e Nikki may be easier to manipulate because everyone knows what could bring her out. A bear. You put like a cuddly little cat or a cuddly little bear mm. and just trot it out into the radio you living room out there. And it would lure her it out. Would, she would be an easier yeah. one to lure, I think. I think she would be lured easier. But it would be either Nikki or Sydney, and then the other one, whoever doesn't get killed off first, would make it a long time. That way we can still have a, a gal in the movie. I just think, I don't know, Sydney, she would admit this, not a, like not big on ath. Uh, she's not very athletic. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. And she's just very. Her and Tyler both. 
They're very unassuming. Mm, you think big so country? So I think just think they could go quietly, very quickly. I think I think big country might hang around just because he's tall and get, gives a little <laughs> a little depth to the movie. Yeah. I don't know. I think Nikki Nikki has some of my traits though, where if something starts to go wrong for her personally, she would very quickly, instead of fighting back, would just give up. Her and I are very much the same yes. like that. We have no fight in us. Um, <laughs> but I don't well, know. Thing to say. Yeah, I don't know. It's that's tough. the radio you horror film. That's that's exactly right. Susanna says I would be the first to go, as in me, because I'm not aware of my surroundings. And because I don't know how to hot dog it away from <laughs> from bad guys like you do. I would be hot dogging out of yeah, there. I'll tell you that much. Right I don't know if you want a hot dog when a serial killer is <laughs> yeah. Find more Riot content online. Riot.radiou.com.